Okay, so the topic today is rearrangements at nitrogen atoms. Uh, there's two examples I'm going to cover. There's more than this uh, in the literature, but these are probably the most two most important. One is the courteous rearrangement, and one is the Beckman rearrangement. So the courteous rearrangement uh, starts with an acyl azide. Now, to make the acyl azide, uh, we generally take a activated um, acid derivative, such as an acid chloride, and treat it with sodium azide. There's other ways to do this, but that's one of the uh, simplest. And we get an acyl azide. So that's the acyl group there, and here is an azide or a zyto group. Now, you may find it tricky to draw out the resonance forms for azides, so it'll take a bit of practice, but this is one form, and we can always push arrows from any resonance structure because they're all equivalent um, in terms of their connectivity, uh, but they're just showing a different arrangement of atoms um, in, in a valence sense around the, uh, sorry, a different arrangement of electrons in a valence sense around the molecule. Okay, so the acyl azide is unstable if it's heated. So if we heat this molecule, we will lose nitrogen. Okay, so we can start this in any order, but probably the simplest thing to do is to lose that nitrogen group, minus N2. And then what happens is that as we lose that group, the R group here migrates to that nitrogen that's losing that pair of electrons. Okay, so it's going to migrate with its pair of electrons. So there we have uh, pair of electrons migrating across to that nitrogen atom. And at the same time as that is happening, this uh, dinitrogen group is leaving. And uh, we can also show that as we lose that pair of electrons that are forming the sigma bond between this R group and this carbonyl carbon, another pair of electrons comes in to sort of uh, replace it or to help stabilize that position. So we draw this pair of electrons going into there. Now, this m might look a bit like curly arrow spaghetti, but um, it does all make sense. So we're always following on tet rules and we've got uh, nice balanced structures. And what we end up with is something that looks quite uh, good from a uh, bonding point of view. So that R group is now going to be attached to this nitrogen. That carbon atom there, okay, so that carbon atom that is uh, bonded to that oxygen also has this nitrogen attached to it. That nitrogen is now doubly bonded to that carbon. And then we have this R group attached to that nitrogen now. Okay, so we have that rather unusual looking structure, but they're, they're quite well known. It's called an isocyanate. Now in this little key concept video, I won't show you what you can do with that isocyanate, but if you check out any web resource or look in your textbook, then you'll find out that isocyanates are quite reactive as well. If you expose them to water, it will cleave off this group and you'll lose carbon dioxide and you'll gener generate an amine. You can also react them with things like amines to make ureas and with alcohols to make uh, carbamates. Okay, but we'll leave it there at the isocyanate so we can move on to the Beckman rearrangement. Now, the Beckman rearrangement starts off with an oxine. So, this is uh, a species that's very easy to produce from a uh, a ketone or a carbonyl compound or an aldehyde um, and hydroxylamine. Now if we treat an oxime with um, a proton salt, so an acid, then we can generate a reactive intermediate. So we can protonate this oxygen of the oxime and generate that intermediate Okay, there it is there. Now, OH2+, whenever you see this in organic chemistry, you should be thinking, oh, excellent, I've got a great leaving group. What am I going to do with that leaving group? Sometimes we'll form carbocations. In this case, the, the cation would be quite unstable. So what happens is we lose that group at the same time as a R group migrates. So if this 
departs with that pair of electrons, then we can get this bond here and this R1 group, that pair of electrons with that R1 group migrate across that nitrogen at the same time. Okay, I'm going to draw this out and it might look a bit wonky at first. Now, that carbon has now lost that substituent in its pair of electrons, so now it does not satisfy the octet rule. So it's a carbocation. And we've still got a lone pair of electrons on that nitrogen. So this carbocation is stabilized by that heteroatom, that nitrogen with its lone pair of electrons. So we can draw another resonance form for this, where we push that pair of electrons in, that carbocation, that carbon there, only has six valence electrons, so this is fine. We're not breaking our uh, golden rule of not, not making five bonds to carbon. So we're going to draw a resonance arrow, double-headed arrow. Very important to choose your arrows um, carefully. And I'm going to redraw this in a linear arrangement because that's more accurate for the structure of this species. Okay, now this nitrogen had sole ownership of this lone pair of electrons. It's now sharing with this carbon here. So it's gone from full ownership to sharing, so it's going to have a formal positive charge. And this is our other resonance form of that cation. Now this, if that group was missing and we were missing the positive charge, that would be a nitrile. But it now has a positive charge and a group attached to it, so we call that a nitrilium or nitrilium ion. And as you might imagine, that's quite a reactive species. So in the presence of water, and this reaction is quite often or normally done in um, aqueous acid, the water will intercept this highly reactive cation and make a new species. Okay, so this also looks a bit awkward, but uh, we can do some proton transfers and uh, get to a much more stable compound. So I'm not going to draw in all that. You can look up on any online resource about the Beckman rearrangement, or you can look in most organic chemistry textbooks, and they'll show you some detailed mechanisms. But you should be able to transfer protons by a base picking up a proton here, and there's nitrogen picking up a proton, and then moving electrons around. And get from that to a very stable species, which is the amide. Okay, amides are incredibly stable, and so this is um, a very favorable process overall. Okay, now there's a couple of features of this that I've glossed over. And one of them that's really important is that these oxymes have a geometry. So the OH group can be either this way, to the right, or it can be to the left. And those two species are different if these R groups are different. And they can actually be sometimes isolated separate, separately from each other. Or you can follow the reactivity of one versus the other. Okay, so when we protonate and make this species, it turns out that the R group that is opposite to the leaving group is the one that migrates. Okay, so one way of explaining this is that we need to have overlap between this sigma orbital of the uh, bond that is migrating with the sigma star orbital of this bond that is being broken. So this NO bond has a sigma star orbital pointing out here that needs to overlap with that sigma orbital for this migration to take place in a concerted manner. Um, but you can look into this in more detail online. Okay, so that's the Curtius and the Beckman rearrangements. They're both rearrangements in nitrogen, and they're both really important um, processes in organic synthesis. Uh, thanks for watching.